Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a partial differential equation, a PDE. I made a number of videos on PDEs. Let me know what you think, and I hope you like them. So we have partial u with respect to x and partial u with respect to y. Their sum is two times the square root of u. So we're gonna to try to find a function uh, such that uh, it gives us two times the square root of that function when we add the partial derivatives, which is something interesting, right? So we're gonna go ahead and solve for it. I'm gonna show you the solution method, which I think is called uh, characteristic equations or something like that, I don't know. I just looked it up and try to learn. You know, I'm new to this too, so bear with me. Now let's go ahead and write this equation as a group of ordinary differential equations. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write this as a system of ordinary differential equations, ODEs. So here's how it goes. You look at the co uh, coefficient of the partial derivative with respect to x, which is one. This is also one. And on the right-hand side, we have a function of u, which is important. Now, so here's how we translate it. We write dx over one equals dy over one equals du over two root u. You see how that works? At least that's how I think it works. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I interpret it. Now, from here, we, something, we get something real quick. These two expressions taken together basically give us something important. Dx and dy are equal, so they differ by a constant. Does that make sense? So I can write x as y plus c1. And the reason why I use c sub 1 instead of c is because we're going to have another constant and I want those to be related. Okay, make sense? So bear with me now. Let's go ahead and isolate c sub 1 because we're going to need it. So from here, c sub 1 is going to be x minus y. Okay, if you isolate it. Great. So that's something we're going to use. Let's go ahead and frame it and keep it for future use. Now, if you look at another part of this equation, and you can go like pretty much any way you want, but I'd like to associate this one and this one. I don't know why. But if I do, I get something like this. du over 2 root u equals dx. Great. Now we can go ahead and actually integrate both sides. 1 over 2 root u is the derivative of root u, right? Remember the formula. And then that equals the integral of dx, which is x, but there's a constant. Let's call that c sub 2. Great. That's another equation we're going to use. Let's isolate c sub 2 from here. That's going to be square root of u minus x. Beautiful. Now we got our constants. They are constants, but they're not constants because, well, our function is actually constant on that curve, line, whatever. I guess that's what it means, right? So they're kind of constants, but they depend on variables. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Anyways, but here's what we want to do. We want c sub 2 to be expressed as a function of c sub 1. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's how it works. Maybe you can tell me more about it. C sub 2 is a function of C sub 1. And from here, we can write the following. What is C sub 2? Root u minus x. What is C sub 1? x minus y. So in other words, we're saying that root 2 minus x, which is C sub 2, is a function of x minus y, which is C sub 1. Make sense? Easy, right? Straightforward. From here, your goal is to isolate u. And that's for you to do okay and if it's birthday if it's your birthday happy birthday to you by the way even though two you didn't come up in, in this equation so let's go ahead and isolate square root of u from here and we can basically write it as x plus f of x minus y now what is that supposed to mean it means that the square root of u needs to be x plus a function of x minus y i'll explain what that means but since i'm looking for u no not for u i mean the variable u in this case the function I need to square both sides, right? So if you square both sides, you don't introduce any extraneous solutions, by the way, so don't worry about it because you're not square rooting both sides, right? Or maybe you're squaring both sides and anyways, whatever. We get you from here. That's the gist of the story. Now, here's the fun part. First of all, what does f of x minus y mean, right? Okay, I'll tell you. But before that, let me go ahead and prove this in the general case. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the check, okay, ready? So first of all, uh, by the way, there's a no other notation that you can use for partial derivatives, which I'll probably use in the future, but 
the partial derivative with respect to x can just be written as u sub x and u sub y respectively because it's easier. Think about it. So from here, if u is this, okay, what is u sub x, the partial derivative, right? When you take the partial derivative, other variables are considered constants. For example, y is going to be constant in this case. So derivative of x is 1 plus. The function is just differentiated on the outside. Multiply by the inside. It's the chain rule, remember? The derivative of x minus y. But y is a constant, so we're only going to differentiate x, which is 1. Good, easy, right? So it's just going to be 1 plus f prime x minus y. This is the derivative of the inside. But there's a 2 here. So we're supposed to bring that power. To, maybe I should do that first. I don't know. Probably messed up. But anyways, you get the idea. It's basically like a power rule, but you also have to differentiate the inside. Okay? Makes sense? I should probably switch these around. That makes more sense or maybe it's more intuitive, I think. Right? Let's go ahead and write it that way because it's definitely much more intuitive. So we basically bring the power down, reduce the power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is what I did first, okay? It's kind of weird, but that's what it is. Let's do the same thing for u sub y, which is the partial derivative. The only thing that's gonna change, let me tell you, when you differentiate x uh, with respect to y, it's gonna be zero because x is considered the constant, remember? So it's just gonna be zero. And of course, you know what? what am I, why am I differentiating the inside again? Sorry, that's just a habit. I have to do the power first. So bring down the power, lower the power by one, and then do the inside. Now, inside is easy. I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y and this with respect to y. But x is going to be 0. And this is just going to be f of f prime of x minus y. Here's one thing you need to be careful about. x minus y, if you differentiate the inside, you get negative 1. The derivative of, uh, what's it called? Derivative of negative 1. Negative y, sorry. <laughs> so this will bring a negative 1 here. Make sense? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Write this in a little better way because this is 0. This negative 1 is going to be multiplied by this to make 2. And then this will become x plus that. And it's just going to be multiplied by f prime x minus y. So this is u sub y and u sub x is 2 times same thing but with a positive sign and multiply by 1 plus f prime of x minus y. Now remember the next thing we need to do to check our work is to add them. Because remember the original problem said, okay, u sub x plus u sub y is supposed to equal 2 root, oops, 2 root u. Is that going to happen? Seriously? Let's go ahead and add these up. To add these, I'm going to add this first. So 2 times x plus f of x minus y times 1 plus f prime of x minus y plus, and there's a minus sign because that's a negative, right? So minus 2 times x plus f of x minus y times f prime of x minus y. Great. Now we have a common factor, this and this, actually along with the 2. We can factor that out. 2 times x plus f of x minus y multiplied by 1 plus f prime of x minus y minus f prime of x minus y. That comes from here, by the way, right? And then these two are going to cancel out. Uh-oh, what did we get? 2 times x plus f of x minus y. But if you remember, that was the same thing as square root of u. So now this is indeed 2 root u. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to u again. But as you can see, our solution works in the general case. So let's go ahead and take a look at a particular case. So particularly, we can say that, what if f of x is equal to x? So f of x minus y is just gonna be x minus y. u is x plus f of x minus y squared, remember that? So I'm gonna replace f of x minus y with x minus y, so it's just gonna be 2x minus y squared. So if u is this, is that gonna work? Well. It should, right? But let me show you a more interesting case. What if f of x is equal to negative x? Then f of x minus y, which appeared in our solution, remember, is going to be the opposite of x minus y, which is y minus x. And u is equal to the square, uh, not the square root, sorry, x plus f of x minus y quantity squared. But if you replace f of x minus y with y minus x, uh-oh, 
x's cancel out, we end up with y squared. So are you saying that u as a function of x and y can be y squared? Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to have both variables, but it's still a function of two variables. Isn't that interesting? And guess what? You can differentiate this with respect to x, which is going to be 0. And you can respect, <laughs> respect. You can differentiate with respect to y. It's going to be 2y. And if you add them, you're going to get 2y, which is 2 times the square root of y squared, which is 2 root u. Of course, y has to be positive in this case. There are some conditions which I didn't bother to check. But as you can see here, this solution works. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.